Welcome everyone, it's the top of the hour, so we'll get started. I'm Dio Agus back in Houston and I'd like to welcome you to today's GlomCon seminar. Today, our talk is titled Lost in Translation, the Lupus Nephritis Classification Over the Years. Our speaker today is Dr. William Whittier. He's a professor of medicine at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago. Thank you. Uh, I noticed that uh, Bill got about 10 minutes of introduction and I got two lines, but I suppose that's okay. I would like to add about Bill is that he's not a, just a core faculty. He's now the uh, one of the co-directors of the ASN Board Review course taking over from me. So I'm glad to hand it over to somebody like Bill. Uh, let me see how this goes. So um, today's topic is lupus nephritis. And I want to give you a little background of, uh, of lupus nephritis um, from the standpoint of the history of lupus nephritis in Chicago. Um, it's often said that, you know, he who knows syphilis knows medicine. This was Osler in the, in the 19th century. This really got transferred to, to know lupus is to know medicine in the 20th century. I don't know if any specific person uh, is, uh, gets accounted for this, but this is what I learned when I was in medical school. If you knew lupus, you knew medicine because of the multiple uh, organ systems that it involves. In fact, I'll put a, 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 the link in here. It's a really nice review about the history of lupus. I mean, it goes back to the fourth century BC when these when this was started to be described. Some of the uh, and the scientific revolution, how it became early learning physiology, and finally got to the point where immunology, which is really what this talk is about today, started defining lupus as a as its own disease. So I would say to know lupus nephritis is to know glomerular nephritis. And why is that? Well, if you think about it, look at all the lesions that you have associated with lupus nephritis. There's an immune complex GN. There's a posse immune GN. Uh, Dr. Whittier is going to speak a lot about this today. Uh, there's, it, you know, from the standpoint of a proliferative GN, there's an MPGN picture. You can have crescentic GN. I know there's overlap of all these. These are somewhat clinical and pathologic, you know, patterns of injury, but you'll see them all in lupus nephritis. Membranous podocytopathy, and even a TMA associated with uh, uh, lupus anticoagulant antibodies. So I think if you really know lupus, I mean, there's not much left except some of the, you know, infiltrative disease and some of the more genetic diseases. But I mean, it's a fair statement to, to say that if you know lupus nephritis, you know, and nobody contributed. I was get choked up. Nobody contributed more to our understanding of lupus nephritis than Ed Lewis, who just passed away uh, about a month ago. Um, Ed was my my chairman, my chief for ever since I came to Rush and, and was there when I was a fellow. Um, he just died last month at the age of 87, uh, very peacefully after you know fighting a battle with heart disease. But I want to tell you about the history of lupus. Um, and, it, and that gets to the history of Ed, Ed Lewis. So he was born in 1936 in New York City. Um, he then went to uh, col uh, went to college at McGill in Montreal in 1954. And from there, he went to uh, British Columbia, Vancouver for medical school. Uh, and then from there, he did his fellowship or he did his residency rather at Johns Hopkins in 1962. He finished his residency and then he moved to Boston in 1965. And I believe Dr. Glassick and he worked together for a time being in Boston in, in uh, you know, kind of a similar field. Um, and then eventually uh, by 1971, he moved to Chicago at University of Chicago for two years. And then shortly thereafter, he moved to uh, what was Rush Presbyterian St. Luke's Medical Center in 1973. But I want to give you this background of lupus nephritis in Chicago, because I think it's really important to understand the history of all this. So we had four huge players, um, and this is going way back. Uh, so Dr. Kark, Dr. Murky, Dr. Pollock, and Dr. Conrad Pirani. Rush really wasn't its own institution back then. These were mostly... Uh, physicians and pathologists at University of Illinois, but they were also associated with Presbyterian Hospital. And then eventually Presbyterian became its own entity, Rush Presbyterian Medical Center. But Dr. Kark in 1955, he really brought the renal biopsy to Chicago and he describes um, the, the procedure. And it's really interesting. His first sentence is the key apparent sheep by pecking kidneys with its large Hawkeye beak what the, the Kia would do is it would, uh, it would attack these sheep and it would pick down to eat their perinephric fat. Um, and it would actually kill them because they bleed to death from this very, you know, this very uh, vascular organ. And then he goes on the human counterpart of the bird makes ill-advised doing a renal biopsy. But he